Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're back visiting Jaronism and his seven ways that you can tell for yourself we never really went to the moon. This is episode number three and we're going to be discussing the reflectivity of the lunar surface. Now, according to Jaron, some of the photographs that we see from the lunar landings are impossible to take. For example, in Apollo 11, Buzz Aldrin is seen coming down the ladder of the lunar module. The sun is behind the lunar module and Buzz is in shadow, yet his spacesuit is relatively easy to pick out and well lit. How could that possibly happen? Well, there's a thing called moonshine and earthshine, and I'd like to go over that real quick. Now the moon reflects somewhere between 3 and 12 percent of the sunlight that reaches it. Depends on where it is in the moon, the nature of the rugolith, etc. The earth, on the other hand, reflects about 30 percent of the sunlight that reaches it due to the large amount of water. And white paper reflects about 70 percent. Now can this reflected light have an effect on photographs? Well, yes it can. I want you to have a look at me. Do you see the shadow under my jaw right here? Look what happens in studio lights when I put a white piece of paper under my head. You see how that shadow just goes away and the underside of my jaw is actually quite well lit? Now granted, this is under studio lights with a rather highly reflected piece of white paper. Now on the moon, reflecting 10% of that light rather than 70, in a dark environment with a very bright light source, specifically the sun, with no filtering of an atmosphere, etc., that can easily do it. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, took that picture. He was standing in the sunlight. His spacesuit is white. He lit up like a studio light. And this is rather easy to simulate, and we're going to go ahead and go through that. But in the meantime, let's see what Jaronism has to say. Cue up the music and let's go. Oh, let's move on here to the next one, uh, number three. Uh, the regolith is reflective. Regolith. If you don't know what that is, I think it means dust. You know, uh, uh, it's not really soil, but it's more rock fragments or something. Uh, moon landing conspiracy theorists love to pore over the photographic evidence collected during Apollo 11 and pinpoint parts of the photos that allegedly debunk the whole landing outright. Well, that's kind of right to say, because if one photo can be proven to be fake, well, then the whole thing is fake. You know, I see we're starting the fallacies early here, Jaron. Uh, let's just take another example. Say I show you a picture of a fake chicken. Does that mean that all photos of chickens are fake? And do you get to just say that my photo is fake or do you have to prove that it is fake? Your job is not to prove that these could be done in a studio. Your job is to prove they were done in a studio. Let's go ahead and see how you do. You know, it means that you shot this in a studio, you changed some of the photos, you're lying to the public, it's not science, it's pseudoscience, it's nonsense, it's storytelling, it's Narnia. what I tell you? Now, here's something else for you, Jaron. We make movies about outer space. Two examples that I can think of right off the bat is one that occurred just before the moon landing, and that was 2001 A Space Odyssey, and then one that was recent, uh, First Man. Both of these movies had simulations of the lunar surface in them. The one in 1968 before the lunar landing obviously was not very good. Uh, it was decent for the time, but it's nothing like we could do with First Man. Simply because we can do this in the movies doesn't prove that we did do it for Apollo 11 in 1969. You still have to prove that. Well, of course, NVIDIA, which has the highest graphics card probably that there is, um, can make one where you can turn up everything until it matches the photos. It doesn't mean that that's real. What, what does that mean? And if we're saying that these things took place on Earth in a studio, then of course NVIDIA can recreate it. What, what difference does any of that make? None is really the answer. You know, Jaron, Planner Walk did a really nice episode the other day on the value of photographs as evidence. I think you're starting to get the idea that just because we can do something doesn't necessarily mean we did do something. Just as you can say, we can make a movie of the lunar surface, but that doesn't prove that's how the video from Apollo 11 was made. 
you still have to prove that. What is the value of the photograph of Buzz Aldrin coming down from the lunar lander? Well, it's Buzz Aldrin coming down from the lunar lander. Buzz Aldrin is still alive. Neil Armstrong lived for many years after the lunar landing as well. We've got 400,000 technicians that built the rockets and put them on the moon. We have tracking by friend and foe of that lunar mission. We have lunar samples that were brought back that are not of this Earth. And we have photographs of the landing site from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Right now, the preponderance of evidence says that those photographs are real. I'm still waiting for your evidence to show that they are not real. So, good luck, man. This is the image that usually uh, people complain about because obviously this should be in the shadow with the sun over here. Uh, should he be lit up this much? You want to know what NVIDIA came up with and the other people's debunking answer is it's the reflection off of Neil Armstrong's suit <laughs> and the ground. It's like reflecting up. Uh, it's just nonsense. Okay, Jaron, you need a little help with focus here, I see. Now, in order to use this photograph as evidence that the moon landing was fake, you need to prove one of two different things. Take your pick. You need to either show that that cannot be taken on the moon, and by your own admission, it's been demonstrated that it could be taken on the moon. Or you need to show specifically where that picture was taken, which means I want to see the studio, I want to see a witness, I want to see some documentation that this was done uh, in Area 51. If not, you have not disproven that this was taken on the moon. And therefore, your argument is still moot. Some 6% of Americans still believe that the government faked the Apollo moon landing. I guarantee it's more than 6%. But again, a lot of people don't want to admit it. A lot of people uh, feel that they might be being watched. Uh, so they don't want to admit that. You know, Jaron, I guess uh, you're giving up on the idea of trying to prove that this didn't happen on the moon. And you're going to a bandwagon fallacy by saying 6% of Americans don't believe we landed on the moon. One, so what? Two... Who cares? Three, then you go on to say that the number is much higher, but people are afraid to admit it because they're being watched. Let me clue you in on something, Jaron. Nobody cares what your silly idea is. You're allowed to have whatever silly idea you want. Nobody's stopping you from doing it. However, if you go to YouTube and make a video about your silly idea, People like me are out there, and we will call you on your silliness. Here it says, NVIDIA used dynamic lighting technology from its new graphics card to recreate that landing in a new model. What, what do you mean? If people are saying it took place on a set, then you recreated the lighting of the set, and that means that they went to the moon? What? Why isn't Aldrin completely cast in shadow? It's due to the reflective properties of the lunar dust, says NVIDIA. Yeah, we just turned up the reflective properties of this dust until he looked like he should. Well, that, well, that doesn't mean anything. What does that mean? What it means, Jaron, is that you have a lot of trouble comprehending this because you are so tied up in your conspiracy story, you can't look at evidence. Now, let's look at a couple of things that you've already made claims to that are easily disproven, okay? Number one, you claim that all they did was adjust the contrast and the lighting sources until things matched. That's not true. I've got a link in the description to the video of how they made this uh, rendition. And what they did was they actually matched the reflectivity of the lunar soil based on measurements, the reflectivity of the lunar module based on evidence and measurements again, and the reflectivity of the spacesuits. Now, this is a videotape taken from the leg of the lunar module as Buzz Aldrin is coming down the ladder. Do you notice that large white blob in the middle? I wonder what that might be. What you have here is Neil Armstrong standing in the sun next to the lunar lander. Now, he's in an appropriate spacesuit with an appropriate reflectivity based on measurements and the intensity of the sun based on the color of the lunar surface and the reflectivity of the lunar surface. What happens when he takes a picture? Here is the result. Pay very careful attention to the reflectivity on the lunar module, the ladder, the leg, the spacesuit, 
and the lunar surface. One of these photographs is the actual photograph from Apollo 11. The other is the computer modeling based on the reflected light off of Neil Armstrong's spacesuit. Now again, these reflective indexes were based on actual measurements of the surfaces involved, the lunar surface, the module, the suits, etc. They weren't done at random. You tell me which one's which, please. Folks, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and paying me a visit today. I hope to see you again soon. Take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. Check out our Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's always appreciated and completely unnecessary if you don't want to. I'll still present all the content that you're getting right now.